Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well. Today I am going to sit down with you and do a good old fashioned chatty hair and makeup video. Um, I'm thinking of cutting my hair today, I may or may not do it in this video, I'm not sure, I'm undecided. But I thought I'd just sit down, share with you some of my current makeup products that I've been using and yeah, just a general little chit chat catch up. I assumed you guys in to do the makeup and I've already put the first product on because I did it when I got out of the shower and it's the Effaclade Duo Tinted Moisturiser in light and it's a tiny bit too dark for me so I really have to blend it down the neck. Um, so I wouldn't recommend this if you're a pale girl like me. Um, I mean it's okay, I kind of like it because it gives me a bit of colour in these winter months. It's probably going to be fine in the summer actually. You never know. And then I find that that can be quite mattifying, which is fine, but also I need that moisture back in my skin. So I usually, before I do my makeup, put a mist over my face. This one's from Gucci. Obviously you don't need a Gucci mist, but this one is lovely. It's very kindly sent this one. And this one is very good. It does create the softest mist. There's nothing worse than a face mister that just squirts a load of water in one area. Now I'm going to move on to concealer and I've been using two different concealers recently. The first one is the Too Faced Born This Way concealer in the shade Swan and I've usually put this around my chin where I have bad spots and then I put a little bit here because I find I have quite bad discoloration there and then I'm going to use this one under my eyes today as well because I've been using the Beauty Pie Brightening Serum Concealer thing, but I think today we're going to go all out. <laughs> and then I'm going to get a new Beauty Pie sponge, and I'm just going to quickly give it a little spritz, and then I'll just blend that out, and it blends out really nicely with these sponges from Beauty Pie. If you are thinking about signing up to Beauty Pie, I would 100% buy these sponges because Sponges I find are very hard to clean and you get so many in a packet that I don't feel so bad about just starting a new one. That should do for concealer at the moment. I'm going to add the tiniest bit of contour with the contour wand. Literally a tiny, tiny bit today. <laughs> Blend that out. I use this little Real Techniques brush. Keep it quite high. There's been lots of tricks I've seen going around of putting it here instead of up here, but I feel like I'm too scared to try it because I feel like it will look like I have a beard. I'm going to pop a little bit of blush on my cheeks. This one is also Charlotte Tilbury. And I love how glowing this one looks. I've recently been sent one of their new glow highlighters. This one is in the shade Moonlit Glow. And I'm going to try that on. Moving on to brows, I've been going in between two different products, one being the Glossier Brow Flick and the other one, my trusty Benefit Precisely My Brow and I think I'm going to use that again today. And I, like many others, have never been blessed with the bushiest of eyebrows so I'm finally embracing doing quite a skinny eyebrow recently and I really like how it looks so I don't over exaggerate anything to do with my brows. Apart from this top corner, I do still add a bit more there because I just don't have any hairs up there. And then I just do lots of little strokes and then I make sure to add quite a few wispy little ones at the front. So there we go. And then the trick is to use the brush at the other end to really blend and smooth that out so that it looks as natural as possible. And there we go, that's one eyebrow done, looking a lot better than the other one. And then I always fix them into place with the Refi Brow Setter. And when I use this product now I really push the opposite direction at the start and then really lightly flick it in and then I just leave it. I don't go in with any of the bits at the other end 
because I find it just looks too harsh on me, it just looks odd. I'm going to do something very simple and easy with my eyes and I'm going to use my favourite Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow palette and this one is Instant Eye Palette Smoky Eyes Are Forever. And honestly, if you're going to buy an eyeshadow palette this year, this is the one to get. It's always in my everyday makeup bag. It's got every shade I need in here and I just love it. It's got a dark brown, it's got a black, it's got fun colours if I want to do a fun look, it's got some really nice neutrals and a little sort of this brown I use a lot and then I mainly just use the mattes but yeah I love it. I just think it's the best eyeshadow palette and it's really all you need. It is a little bit pricey but it is worth the investment. Um, it is just, I can't rave about it enough to be honest. So I'm going to take the lightest shade and put it all across my lid. It doesn't do much but it just sort of evens out everything. And then I'm going to go in with the first matte shade which I use all the time and just press it into my outer corner and blend it in. I'm using this giant fluffy brush which is perfect. Then on a smaller brush, this one's from Louise Young, I'm going to pop the same shade underneath my lash line. If you're looking for some new makeup brushes, I would also really recommend Louise's brushes. I feel like they're what makeup brushes used to be like. I find a lot of them these days can be quite scratchy, but these ones are super soft. And then on another Louise Young angled brush, I'm going to take that really dark brown and I'm going to press it into the outer corner of my upper lid and just try and really concentrate it on the outside. I don't want it to go any further in really. And then I'll do a tiny little flick coming off from it. And then with that little brush I used underneath my eye, I'm just going to use it to blend that line out. Just so that everything is super soft and blended. And then the mascara that I've been loving recently is the Bobbi Brown Smoky Eye Mascara. I only have a mini of this, um, but I really, really like it. I feel like it does exactly what it says it does. <laughs> Gives really nice, gorgeous, smoky lashes that just look really, really soft. And I think that's so important with pale skin is just to do makeup that looks soft and nothing too harsh. Unless you're going for something too harsh on purpose, I think it's best to stick to soft everything. <laughs> There's a close up of the mascara in the eyeshadow. It's very simple and easy. Also been quite liking adding a sort of fake beauty spot and I have actually got a freckle here that's quite big so I just tend to go over the top of that freckle and add a little spot and then press it in. I've got a winning lip combination coming up next. <laughs> I put the Glossier at Balm.com on before I started doing my makeup so that's been sitting on my lips and I've just rubbed it off a tiny bit. And then I go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. And then I take Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in Kim KW, which is this really light baby pink, and it's very glossy, so I find it's quite good for my dry lips. And I just sort of pat a little bit on and then I'll go in with my middle finger and just sort of run my finger over everything and blend it out. And that is the finished makeup. Now let's move on to hair. And I have some amazing hair products to share with you guys that I am totally obsessed with and that make me want to wash my hair all the time. <laughs> I'm going to do a mini haircut because I am still growing out my hair. Um, I quite like the length it's at at the moment to be honest but can you believe a year and a bit ago my hair was like up here <laughs> it's quite crazy I'm going to cut my hair a little bit differently to how I used to I'm going to take the bottom section 
of each side. I'm going to pull that hair around to the front and then comb it down and I'm going to trap it so that my fingers are laying completely straight and then I'm just going to chop a tiny bit off the bottom just to neaten up the ends a bit again all the way down and I'm just memorizing how much I'm taking off each section and with the top two sections I do exactly the same thing turn my head to the front and trim off about a centimetre I'm going to add a few layers by grabbing the top section up and I stop about just at my eyebrow, grab that much and just bring it up <laughs> and then I hold it with my fingers, bring it down and I trim straight up into that. And then I take the next section and do the same thing, pull it up and then chop straight up. And then I take a section at the crown, bring that up and back and then I chop that straight and chop into it. And then with the pieces that frame my face I usually find it easier when they're dry but you can also do it when they're wet. So I just section the same amount on each side and then I take these very short bits put them together I'm going to pull them straight over my face and I then just chop straight and then I pull them apart and I put my scissors at a downward angle and just sort of inch into the hair taking little bits of hair off and just tapering it down nicely. And once you're happy with that you can pull the rest of the hair to the front and then the easiest way to taper that down is just to do the same thing holding the scissors at the top and just slowly inching scissors down towards the ends and then once the hair's dry we can go back in and trim any bits that need trimming maybe add some more layers who knows I may actually add a few more shorter layers right now um, I'm just going to take a smaller top section and bring that up and then chop a bigger bit off and then this time I'm going to chop into it. Okay, I'm going to go and hoover the floor and then I will be back. I've moved the camera down slightly because I was sitting on my legs and my legs were dead. I'm going to talk you through my favourite hair products quickly um, and tell you what I've used today and what I've been loving. So the shampoo I used today was the Redken Volume Inject Shampoo. To be honest, any Redken shampoo I am just there for. <laughs> they are so good and I love this one because it sort of smells it smells like roses I can't put my finger on what it smells like so I put a normal size amount of that in my hair and the thing I've been doing recently that's changed is getting my hair really really wet before I put any shampoo in it and then I sort of rub the shampoo in my hands before putting it into my hair and really massage it in for about two minutes actually and I also have one of those little scalp sort of massages that I use at the same time and I just find it gets my hair super clean and I just love the feeling of it. So yeah that's been working really well and I didn't use the conditioner today because I did a hair mask and the hair mask I've been loving recently is from Kerastase. It's their Chroma Absolute hair mask and it is just so good. I'm really obsessed with this whole entire range from Kerastase now um, I just don't know what I'm going to do when I run out of it. <laughs> so I leave that in my hair for about five minutes, I try and do five minutes, and then I rinse it out. 
and it's just ooh, it makes your hair so soft. I think this range is meant for colour treated hair um, but I just love it because that means it's clearly for damaged hair and so it just gives that extra bit of moisture into your hair. And then about once a week or every other hair wash for me I use the other hair treatment from the range of the Chroma Absolute and this is the Resurfacing High Shine Rinse Treatment and oh my god! Huh? If you're going to buy one hair product this year this has to be it. It just your just hair just feels like someone else's hair, like my hair does not feel like my own hair when I put this in. <laughs> so you do your shampoo and then you just sort of drizzle this onto your hair and wait two minutes and then rinse it back out and it is a game changer, it's so good. Your hair feels so soft, um, especially if you go in with the mask after this and yeah, I just can't recommend it enough so I'm going to link all of these products down below um, and then the other thing from this range like I've just discovered this whole range of Kerastase that I absolutely love I am a big lover of heat protectant and they also have a heat protectant in the range which I just love I've not got on with a lot of high-end heat protectants before but this one is amazing and it just, it's really good for smoothing my hair down because I get very frizzy hair, especially when using heat. And as you can tell, I've got these sort of frizzy bits appearing because I haven't dried my hair yet. And this is just what happens for my hair naturally. Um, so this is the Anti-Frizz Antioxidant Thermic Serum. And it's for sensitized or damaged color treated hair. And you just spray it on and I sometimes brush it through and then just start using your heat product and it is just so good. So I'm going to spritz some of this th through my hair now and it's good to do it in sections because then it reaches as much hair as possible. Then I'm going to do a quick whiz over with this attachment on the Dyson Air Wrap um, just to get my hair a bit smooth. Then in very small sections I'm going to start using the bristle brush, round brush attachment and I do this to add volume and a really nice bounce at the end. Okay, that's the finished hair all nicely dried. Florian's eating a chew in the background, so sorry about that noise. <laughs> I'm really happy with how the haircut has turned out as well. I've got lots of volume and lovely little layers going on. And I feel like these hair products also really, because they make your hair look really nice and nourished, it really intensifies my colour, so I feel like I have a really deep sort of red going on at the moment. Just a little side note, I do still have a few of my makeup bags left on my website if you are interested in picking up one. I've got, this is my first prototype in the actual fabric. This is a tall shape. I'm not sure, I think I might have one left in this um, in the pink linen but I don't have any of the white floral left anymore. Um, it doesn't have a white lining, this one was just a prototype. It has a really nice sort of natural cotton thicker fabric. So yeah, this has been amazing for going away over the Christmas and New Year period because I've just chucked everything in here and it can hold a lot of stuff. <laughs> oh, she's come for a cuddle instead. Have you? That's nice. Look, Flory, we really match our hair colour now. Look. So yeah, still got a few of those on the website and thank you for all the love on the previous YouTube video where I made the vintage blouse. Um, I am currently working out how to make patterns into a digital format and I had my first day trying it yesterday and it actually went pretty well, touch wood. So I'm sure I'll do a video about when these patterns go 
on my website um, because I'm going to plan on selling them so that you guys can have a go at making things and yeah I'm very excited about it it's got me in a good little productive mood I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you have any more questions for me please put them down in the comments down below and I will do my best to get back to you yeah I hope you guys are all having a great day and I will see you in my next video bye